What is going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from Marvel, DC, and even IDW as well. But today, we are going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and we are going to begin our coverage over Captain America The Winter Soldier Storyline. Now, this is the story that brought back Bucky and brought him back as the Winter Soldier. And this was a 12 part storyline. And so with it being 12 parts long, we're going to use two videos to cover this story. Starting with the first six issues in this video right here. But this is the storyline that brings back Bucky into the current time of Marvel Comics. I do hope you enjoy. To begin our story, we pick up five years ago in the past, where we see that the Red Guardian has been captured. Now, for new fans of comics, the Red Guardian is basically Russia's version of Captain America. Now, this is the seventh Red Guardian Marvel had introduced by this point and his name was Kresno Ganiski. I do hope I pronounced that correctly. But he is killed off by Alexander Lukin and the Red Skull. Now Alexander Lukin is making his first appearance in this book, but he killed the Red Guardian because the Red Guardian was trying to bring in Alexander Lukin for his crime. And we will learn more of those crimes down the road. But the Red Skull, as everyone knows, is the main villain of Captain America. He was the one Captain America had to battle against back in World War II. But this is the Red Skull five years before the present day, where you have the Red Skull see something that Alexander Lukin has and ask if he can buy whatever the thing is. Except Alexander says no that the only way he would hand over to the Red Skull if the Red Skull hands over his Cosmic Cube, which at this moment, the Red Skull does not have the cube, but he is looking for it. And you have the Red Skull leave with other weapons from Alexander. But getting into the present day, we see Red Skull looking out to New York City. But this is the moment we learn that the Red Skull has the Cosmic Cube again. Now, if the cube has enough power, the cube can do a lot of different things for the Red Skull, except it needs power. And so you have the Red Skull trying to give the cube that power, so he begins the process of his plans. And we know that part of his plans is to kill off Captain America, but this time he wants Captain America to struggle before he dies, making Captain America beg for death, but it will be a slow and long progress, just continuing with the idea of the Red Skull being the main villain of Captain America. Then we finally pick up with the main character of the book, and that person of course being Captain America himself, but he is talking to Sharon Carter, the niece of Peggy Carter, who was Steve's ex-girlfriend back in World War II. Sharon Carter is also Captain America's ex-girlfriend at this point in Marvel Comics. And she is here to check up on Steve because Nick Fury is concerned about Captain America because apparently he has not been himself. Even though at this point, Captain America has gone through a lot, except Captain America has been reckless on missions lately. Now we do get a flashback to see what Sharon Carter and Nick Fury means about Captain America being reckless. Well, we see that there were some terrorists who had stolen a train and were planning to use the train as a way to blow up part of the city. Now, Captain America was there to stop them, except the method he used was reckless. He was throwing people off the train, putting their leader in a coma, and also the fact the train could have derailed and killed more people. The one person he left alive? Well, that dude barely knows anything about the bomb. So after being reckless, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Captain America barely got any information about who made the bomb and why were they planning to use the bomb for. Getting back to the present day, you have Steve Rogers just admit that he still has flashbacks from his time in World War II. 
seeing the dead bodies of friends and other soldiers who fought alongside with him. And so with those flashbacks, it kind of haunts him because to him, it is not fair that he got a second chance of life, but those friends and other soldiers did not get that chance. But you have Sharon Carter leave, but she tells Steve that she is going to be making sure he is okay, that he needs to check in with her and to be honest on how he is feeling. But we see Captain America letting us know that his main goal is to find the Red Skull since he know the Red Skull is back again. Now getting over to the Red Skull, this is where you had a story give us the big moment of the book. Where you have the Red Skull letting us know that he knows where Captain America lives. That he knows everything about Captain America and will sooner or later make his move. Except that is the moment you have the Red Skull get a phone call from Alexander Lucan, where Alexander tells the Red Skull that he knows that the Red Skull has the Cosmic Cube again, where he asks the Red Skull for it, and of course, the Red Skull says no. But that is when the Red Skull is shot and killed, and this is a huge moment. And the question is, who killed the Red Skull? because we see the person who shot him come into the room and grab the cosmic cube. But we get a page about a group of people who are waiting for a phone call, most likely waiting for the Red Skull to give a call to tell this team to proceed with their plan, except the Red Skull is dead and the group is becoming impatient. But that is when we see Crossbone who tells the group of men to wait. Their call will come soon. But then we get another flashback where we see Bucky and Captain America fighting back in World War II. This is a very important moment of the book because Bucky was killed right before Captain America was frozen in time, literally moments before he was frozen. But in this flashback, Bucky dies by being shot up by the enemy soldier, which is completely different than what happened. But this dream does make Steve Rogers wake up freaking out. Except when he does wake up, he gets a call from Sharon Carter letting him know that he is needed on S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier. Of course, the reason why is because they found the dead body of the Red Skull. And this is where we get into some weird stuff. Because of course, when you find a dead body of a high level villain, you want to make sure it is the true dead body of that person. Except for the Red Skull, they can't test his DNA. The reason why is that this Red Skull is in a body of a clone of Steve Rogers. So before this series, Armin Zola preserved the mind of the Red Skull and put the mind inside a clone of Captain America. And so for them to make sure that this is the Red Skull, they need Steve Rogers DNA sample. Now they go to the scene of the crime where of course they find the blood of the Red Skull and also looking for clues on who killed the Red Skull. Now the windows that Red Skull had installed into his apartment could stop most bullets, but not all. Someone figured that out. And also the fact that one of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents finds the case of the Cosmic Cube. They don't know that the Cosmic Cube was inside the case before being taken away by our mysterious killer. But you have this S.H.I.E.L.D. agent tell us that this case was about to receive a huge amount of energy and that energy was going to come from a source that is underneath Manhattan. And so you have Captain America and Sharon Carter go to the location of where the power source was coming from, where of course it is the same location Crossbones and his group of men was at. Now Crossbone is hiding from Captain America and Sharon Carter, so of course they have no idea that he is there. But to Crossbones, this leads to him wondering even more on what happened to the Red Skull. Because how did Captain America and Sharon Carter find out where they were at? Now when Captain America and Sharon Carter find out where the power source was coming from, of course they find out that the Red Skull and Crossbones had planted a bomb underneath New York. The plan was for the bomb to blow up, but the bomb would give off a huge amount of energy and would go to the Cosmic Cube to charge it up. 
But after Captain America and Sharon Carter were able to deal with the bomb, that is when you have Nick Fury tell them that the container back at Red Skull apartment was holding the Cosmic Cube. And they now know they have to find it. But while Captain America and Nick Fury were talking over their comms, Crossbones overhears that the Red Skull is dead. And so he tells the team in Paris to get their bomb ready to blow up. Now we jump over to a one page that shows us that there is a team in Paris getting ready to set off a bomb that would blow up Paris. This team is being led by a character named Mother Knight. And we are not really going to sit down and discuss her really. She's just a Red Skull Lieutenant. But we get to jump over to Nick Fury, Captain America, and Sharon Carter who are right now on their way to Paris to help out with the bomb situation because if that bomb goes off, millions of people will die. And so this is a huge thing. But you have Sharon Carter tell Captain America to go get some rest and she will let him know when they are close to Paris and landing. But this leads into Captain America thinking about how Baron Zemo was able to capture him and Bucky back in World War II. Except when he is thinking back, it is not how he remember. Meaning that someone or something is playing with the mind of Captain America, making him remember things differently. Before he is able to think more about it, that is when a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent tells him that he is needed because they got word from a team of soldiers who were sent in to stop the Red Skull's men in Paris. Of course, the team in Paris works for the British government, but this team is being led by Union Jack, a British superhero. But this is where things get interesting because when him and his team get down there, all of the Red Skull's men who were going to set off the bomb in Paris are now dead. The big question is, who in the world killed all of them? And so now Captain America and Sharon Carter have to find out who did it. Now luckily for them, when they do get to Paris, that is when they see a jet leaving. And the big question is that if the people on the jet are responsible for the death of the Red Skull's men. And so you have Captain America jump down to see if they are responsible. And this begins a battle where we get a bunch of pages of Captain America kicking their butt. But we discover that these men belong to the AIM organization that is also known as Advanced Idea Mechanics. Now, we're going to learn more about their group here down the road. But you have Captain America being able to stop them and capture them to gather more information. Which is just them saying that they were after the devices that Red Skull stole from them. Which were the bombs and the Cosmic Cube. We do get this moment where you have Captain America and Sharon Carter taking some time off by walking around Paris. Where I like this moment because you have Captain America talking about some of the battles he fought here in Paris. How he hates how the world painted France as a bunch of cowards for some of the things they did in World War II. But you have him say that with him fighting alongside with them, he knows that the people of France are the farthest things from a bunch of cowards. Now we pick up with Jack Moreau and this is a very complicated character in a way because this man has been so many different characters it is not even funny anymore. For example, he took the name Bucky for a minute because he loved Captain America and Bucky so much. Now, I could be mistaken, but I think when he became a partner to Steve Rogers, he was using the name Nomad. But by this point, he has retired being a hero and now he is just a drunk. The reason why we are focusing on him is because when he is leaving the bar, he is greeted by our mysterious character again and Jack Moreau is shot and killed by this person. Now part 4 opens up with us learning that Alexander Lucan was the one behind the death of the Red Skull and also the one who now holds on to the Cosmic Cube. Which honestly is not a big surprise there with how the story was going. But we see him in New York about to have a meeting with Roxxon Oil Company. 
and also looking to find a way to power up the cube once again. Now we pick up with Captain America back at his apartment where he is just working out and trying to take his mind off things. Except that is when he gets a call from Nick Fury. This is where Nick Fury sends him images about something that we can't see. But it makes Captain America angry and now he wants to figure out if it has some kind of connections to the Red Skull situation. This is where we have Nick Fury meeting up with Sharon Carter and this is a very important moment here. Nick Fury explains that they found the sniper that killed the Red Skull, except the fingerprints on the weapon makes Nick Fury very concerned because the fingerprints belong to Jack Moreau, who we saw earlier was killed by our mysterious character. The reason why it bothers Nick Fury is because with everything happening now, someone else who has connections to Captain America is involved. But Nick says that since Jack Moreau used to work for S.H.I.E.L.D., they put a tracker on him. It is an old school tracker, but it should help to locate him. And so Nick wants Sharon to locate him and see if he could be the one who killed the Red Skull. Now we learn what made Captain America so angry, which is the fact that someone destroyed the grave of his two close friends, which were William Naslun and Jeff Mace. Now I could sit down and explain the characters in detail, but I would do that in a separate video. The only thing you need to know that these men were close friends of Captain America, but also the fact that after he has supposedly died, these men took up the mantle of Captain America after him to keep up the image that America had their Captain America. So seeing that someone destroyed the graves of his friends, it makes Captain America even more eager to find out who is behind all of this. But after Captain America leaves the grave site, you have him thinking back to the time Zemo had captured both him and Bucky, how Zemo had tortured them and other stuff. But while thinking back to that moment, that is when he is shot at by Crossbones. And Crossbones is up there with the rest of Captain America villains who is more of a A-list villain. Well, to me he is. But this leads into him battling in the middle of the street. Except this is Crossbones actually being able to be down on Captain America. Because Captain America of mine is in the past thinking about the flashback. It is bothering him so much he can't focus and Crossbones can see this. And to him, this is not a fair fight. He wants Captain America to be at his full strength. So he leaves telling Captain America that the Russians should have called him when Captain America was ready to fight. But we then pick up with Sharon Carter and remember that she left the base of S.H.I.E.L.D. to find Jack Moreau because his fingerprints appear on the sniper that killed the Red Skull. Using the tracker to find him, she was able to move into the room where the tracker said he would be in. Except that is when she is ambushed from behind by our mysterious character who then knocks out Sharon Carter. Now you have Captain America meet up with Nick Fury again, except this time you have Captain America believe that Alexander Lucan could be behind everything because they found a dead body in London. The man they found used to work for Alexander and you have Nick Fury tell Captain America about how Alexander used to have a nice military career during the Cold War except he hated the idea of the Soviet Union collapsing and he disappeared. But recently he reappeared three years ago with a powerful corporation that is in different countries across the globe. Now, the corporation is named Kronos and it is a name of a small village that makes Captain America think back to the war. The reason why Kronos is so important is because it was the last time Captain America met with a man named Vasily Karpov, I really hope I pronounce this man's name correctly, who apparently 
Alexander Lucan used to work under. But of course, the reason why Captain America does not like Vasily is based around the idea that Vasily is too cruel. Because when Captain America and Bucky were sent to help out Russia as a way to find the Red Skull, they have captured a man who could have helped them find the Red Skull. But Vasily believes in torturing the man for information, basically stabbing him in a way that would make somebody beg to be killed off. Even though his methods are cruel, they worked, and they were able to locate the Red Skull. Their hostage tells them that the Red Skull is hiding out in Kronos. But after getting the information, it leads to Vowsley and Captain America talking where their views on the world are different. But for Vasily, Captain America has to realize that everything he is doing is because of the war. It is a very important conversation between them, but they leave for Kronos. Now when Captain America, Vasily, Bucky, and a few other heroes make it to Kronos, of course this leads into a huge battle between the two sides, where the heroes are looking for the Red Skull and this secret weapon that he may have. Where you have Captain America being able to find Red Skull and the weapon, and so you have Captain America try his best to stop the Red Skull, which he does. The problem is that after Captain America stops him, he has to focus on the weapon that is going crazy, which gives the Red Skull the chance to get away to battle the heroes down the road again. Now thanks to the weapon going crazy in the big battle, the small village Kronos was burned down and nothing was left except maybe a few people. But the reason why this area is so important is because we see a young Alexander Lucan. Kronos was his home and now he has no home, but Vasily takes him in as a ward. But getting back to the present day, we see Captain America asking Nick Fury if he can borrow a jet to go somewhere else. Because remember, that Captain America memories have been going crazy and causing him problems and fights. And so he needs to clear his head. But after he leaves the room, you have S.H.I.E.L.D. agents come and ask Nick Fury if he told Steve Rogers something very important. And we see a folder on the desk of Nick Fury, letting us know something is about to change the world of Captain America. Then we get a page that reminds us that, hey, Sharon Carter was taken about two books ago, and we see that she is still alive, but our mysterious character has plans for her down the road. But getting back over to S.H.I.E.L.D., where we pick up with Nick Fury and him talking to Agent Tap about Sharon Carter missing. Now, Agent Tap will only appear in this story here. He was a one-off character to show that Agent Carter has moved on from Captain America after they broke up and got in with him. Except at this moment, they have also broken up as well. So she is single again. But Nick Fury tells Agent Tap about the fact that Sharon Carter is missing and gives Agent Tap the chance to go and find out what happened to her. But we pick up with Captain America, where we see him right now at the island where he has supposedly died at. This is the place where Captain America was captured by Zemo and he broke out to try to stop a rocket from leaving the island where of course he fell in the water and was frozen in time and Bucky was killed in the explosion and so he came here hoping to get his mind straight since his memories are messing with him making it hard for him to finish certain tasks except when he is walking around the place he started to see people around him from his past now to Captain America, these fake people feel real to him, to the point that he starts to try to attack them to get rid of them. And this is going on with the idea that something is going on with Captain America, that someone could be playing with his mind. And the big question is, who? Except after trying to deal with these fake people, that is when he gets outside to where the missile used to be at. 
the place where he lost Bucky, and he lost a chance to live with his friends in the 1940s. Just him seeing this place really brings back a lot of bad memories, but he needed to come here. But then he goes back to the jet so he can leave, except when he gets to the jet, he starts to get flashes of Sharon Carter somewhere being held captive, letting him know that he has to find her. And so with him seeing where she could be at, you have Captain America go to the location and this is where things get very interesting. Because this is the moment you have Captain America beat up the guys who were watching over Sharon Carter in Philadelphia. But when he gets to her side, she tells him how him coming here is a trap. She saw the face of the person who killed the Red Skull, the man they have been chasing. And she tells him that it is Bucky. He is Captain America's old sidekick from the 1940s. But after Sharon Carter tells him that, that is when you have Agent Tapper call up Nick Fury to let him know that he had found a bomb underneath Philadelphia. The same kind of bomb that was found in New York that Captain America and Sharon Carter disabled. The problem is that Bucky, aka the Winter Soldier, turned on the bomb, which of course blows up killing Agent Tapper, but also blowing up a chunk of Philadelphia. To make matters worse, the bomb gave energy to the Cosmic Cube, the one that Alexander Lukin has in his possession. And this is where we are going to end today's video. And so please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know. Your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I'll see y'all next time.